Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the fourth episode of this week's special edition about neurotopics, about um, our human brain, how it works, ab about neurobionics. In this episode, we will go back from the practical examples we, we've had before with the animals, with the moths scent or the sense of direction from the red slam project we will now go back to the human brain and maybe you're wondering if your brain looks like this um, on the inside so bright and colorful and i have unfortunately to disappoint you it looks not like this this is a very uh, late technology called fiber tractography, which means that we are able to map the connections of our brain, or it's better said to, to map not all of them, but certain paths, certain chosen uh, groups of connections and you can see here the two parts the two hemispheres of the brain the left and the right we see the connection in between here and this technology is full of a lot of advantages because we can now mark pathways which are more related to each other than other pathways in your neural network. Also here, when you look on this uh, image, you have to keep in mind here is the front part, here you have your eyes, and this part here is the part, for example, where we, where, where our conscious thinking happens to take place. And it's also a part which is very often impaired in uh, patients with mental problems. So, the better we will understand connections here and the structure of it and how they interact with each other, the better we will be able to not only make diagnosis and to understand the daily problems and challenges those people are facing, but also we will be able more and more to even repair these pathways due to the new revolution in neuroscience which is called neuroplasticity. It's a very simple and well understandable uh, knowledge. It means simply that as an infrastructure, your brain connections change. They change when you think about some things more often, more intensively, then these connections will be strengthened, they, they get stronger. And the other way around, when you stop thinking about special abilities you have here, yeah, maybe you, uh, you've learned some words for uh, French, yeah, to impress your French-speaking girlfriend or whatever, and then you stop repeating them for 10 years, you don't use what you've learned, then these pathway, pathways maybe don't will get lost, but they will they will get really weak and you won't be able to use it as you need it. This technology is also combined with other uh, technologies, for example, with the latest model of neuroimaging. It's called cinematic rendering. Cinematic rendering means that based on a simulation of the reflection of light, 
there is created a three-dimensional dim model of the human brain. And in combination with the fiber tractography, we can now get all these connections in a very, very good looking digital model. One other way where you can really use for, for medical reason this technology is, for example, the, uh, the analyze of multiple sclerosis. That's a um, very bad diagnosis and what it basically affects these connections here, the white matter, and the information proceeding uh, and directing from, from one part of the brain to another is weakened. So when we get to understand better where it starts and how it develops, then there is, of course, more fighting material for all doctors and scientists to develop, develop better and more effective treatments against MS. It's also interesting for ourselves because when we map, for example, people while they are thinking about something, while they are doing something, our mental behavior gets also mapped here. You can then maybe say, well, you know, people who are very good in learning, very quick, very fast in learning new languages, they have a stronger part of the brain here. And maybe people who are more passionate, who are more, more um, inhibitive, who have a better self-control, have stronger connections here. So can we be maybe reduced in our behavior only to some kind of biological machine, which is only dependent on whether the connections are stronger or weaker or more or less? That's a very interesting impact this technology makes for us humans. Let's go further. In the last episode, we talked about the connectum. So the idea of mapping a living being and its neuronal network as a whole. And as I said, the fiber tractography we've said, it's not the whole connectum. It's not all of our connections because it would be billions of them. But, and we also talked about, talked about this in the last episode, there is one living being which already was completely modeled in a digital version and that's the C. elegans worm. The worm is one millimeter short and has all in all 302 neurons and around 7,000 connections in between them. And what the scientists did, maybe the camera can come a little closer to take maybe first a look at the worm and yeah, that's the name of the project, the Open Worm project. It's an open source program so that everybody can have access to it for research. And that's the digital model of the worm. And that's the original. And all these neurons from the worm in a digitalized form, the program looks a little bit like that. So maybe for those of you who are more, inter more interested in the technical details behind all that, and now something very interesting happens. So if you are 
if you are going to upload the software which was created by or based on the model of the, of the living worm, if you upload it in a robot like that. We have this robot here uh, accessible in our uh, Museum of the Future at the Ars Electronica Center. When you load up the software in this little machine, then it starts to move like the original. It stops in front of uh, walls. It stops if you put your hand in front of it. And there was nothing specially done. It was only uh, made possible by the software which was based on the, uh, on the digitalized copy of the living being. So what do you think? If we would take some spectrography from your brain, just one part, we are not able to do everything, but one part, and we could immediately upload it to someone else. Maybe your uh, capacity to, to learn very good uh, mathematics. How would you feel about that? Uh, how would you feel, or do you feel it's, a, it's, it's making our world more fair, more safe? Or are you afraid that we human beings are maybe, again, reduced only to some calculations which are dependent on some connections here in the brain? Are you afraid of losing maybe some... Uh, religious uh, background of the human existence if science is going to uh, go on in this place. Of course, we are far from knowing everything, but we are <clears throat> getting to know more and more. So with these questions, I will leave you alone. I'm very thankful for your attention. I hope there was something interesting there for everybody. And if you like it, Keep watching us. We are here with more videos every weekend, every week, and sure you enjoy it. Have a nice weekend. See you.